Hey guys, what are you doing? I am looking at my messy shop. I am rearranging everything. And of course, right in the middle of rearranging, no matter what you do, here comes more guitar, so you get sidetracked. But my shop is messy. It's messy like Grandpa Bub's two-story outhouse. Just a different kind of messy, if you know what I mean. But along this theme, continuing with this theme, we got some crappy guitars rolling in here. In fact, I want you to notice I'm wearing my Nakona shirt. How do you like that? Of course you do. You see that guitar right there that somebody is beating Bezel Bum or Satwin or whatever you want to call it? Yeah, I think I have the guitar that uh, was used in this beating or this assault. Wait a minute, is it really an assault if you're doing mankind a greater good? You know what, let your conscience be your guide. You know what, never mind, don't do that. Anyway, forget about that, all that wash, wash, wash. So, I introduced a couple guitars to you in, in an episode about Sean Mann Dude, the worst arch tops yet. Uh, we're going to go to work on one of those, but that episode is right up there, right about now. There's a link there. But, so, as usual, I usually do a before and then an after once we get done with the guitar. But here's the before on this one. We're going to call the Galliano Junk Pile, the Galliano Junk Pile. The only thing that makes this pretty is it's with me and it's a wonderful headstock. But other than that, this thing is tore up from the floor up. Now, over in this area, right over in this general area, right over here that you can't see, I have a new camera set up where I can look down on... Uh, a bench I have set up over here on wheels with the Stumac uh, workstation on it works out pretty good but it's going to give us that downward look like not like downward dog yoga or other stuff that I don't do but that downward autopsy look like welcome to the world of forensic science and they whip the sheet back and everybody faints remember that Quincy yeah, you do remember. I look at the I look at the demographic on my channel. Yeah, you all are as old as me, or maybe you don't look as good, but you, you don't lie to me. You know the show. Uh, for you less squeamish, Marcus Welby, MD. Same thing. But we're gonna just take a look at this guitar um, from the top down, and then when I'm working on it through a series of episodes, this is gonna be a playlist. So um, we're gonna end up pulling the neck off of this thing. Um, I'm talking like it's not a person but yet it's sitting right in front of me but um you hear all that the tone bar braces are off inside of this thing the back of it is coming off the top there's cracks all over the place that action and that neck angle are not good so we're going to go through and modify this thing quite a bit but you're not really going to be able to tell we're going to um make it look good and kind of keep this up so before we get going too far down the road uh, there was a company called Oscar Schmidt that started in the 1880s we've talked about this in other episodes and when the depression hit they were making most of their money in zithers and auto harps which is that thing uh, when again you're my age your teacher would have, have this thing and they would hold it against their chest and it had buttons on it like accordion and they would strum it. It looked like a harp called an auto harp. Anyway, the Oscar Schmidt company was going through some financial stuff in the early 30s and they sold off um, some of their brand names like Stella. You know Stella? I've got one over there in the corner that's like the worst ever. I'll dig it out and show it to you at the end if I can remember. But they sold off Stella to Harmony. And then it came back into the company after late 50s, early 60s. Anyway, you know that uh, Harmony and Kay were both jobbers. So you could 
ask them to make a guitar with your brand name on it, which is where Silvertone, Airline, Sears, Montgomery Wards, True Tone, uh, that's Western Auto. That one's a little bit rarer. But anyway, they would send the guitars off to a jobber and say, put our brand on it and make this. And for a couple of years, as near as I can tell, 40, 41, maybe 42, Galliano brand was made by Harmony. There's some numbers in here, and we'll go over that at some point. But this guitar is actually so tore up and cracked and parts are coming off it that it's actually going to be much easier for me to do what I'm going to do with it and make it solid and do the bracing and the neck reset and everything. The only thing is, is as I've told you in other episodes, when we start talking about the neck uh, block and the tail block and stuff starting to come loose, um, like the Bonneville junk pile, you want to catch that one if you want to talk about the structural dynamics of a body that's getting old and the waist is starting to shrink. And, you know, it's kind of an odd joke that, you know, if I was a guitar, when I got old, my waist would shrink, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, you don't. I'm the only one that does. Okay. Anyway, we're going to throw this one on the bench and we're going to look at it top to bottom and see what I have to do. And then, again, there will be a series of episodes where I pull the neck off of it I'm going to raise the neck up a little bit, and then we're going to redo the body. I'm going to hot rod this thing up. I'm going to use uh, the right trim so it will accent things, but I'm not going to put any metal on this one, and I doubt that I'll matchbook the neck. So you're going to see a lot of the way it is stick with it when I'm done. And believe me, you're going to covet this thing, which is no different from any of uh, my other guitars. So let's go hit the... I really don't want to call it an autopsy table, but it kind of is. Um, plastic surgery table? Anyway, let's go. All right, guys. Before we go any further, I have to remind you about Nikona. Nikona. I'm getting used to this cam camera angle. Nikona. Because when I see you on the street... You're going to spot me, and you're going to fangirl me, and you're going to be like, Hey, Ken, I'm going to be like, dude, before we start discussing what's going on, did you check out Nikona? And I do not want to hear, Oh, I must have forgot. No, Nikona, link, where is it? Oh, yeah, this is a nightmare. Below, there we go. Okay, let's get this guitar roll in here. Um, that headstock is incredible. Galliano Royale. It's not tore up. That's not a chip. That's just the part of the G. It's got some fakish binding something or other here. Oh, that is actually a little groove of binding there. Do you see it? Um, the nut is still here. The frets, let's move this down a little bit here. Remember, I'm still getting used to this. The frets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 frets. You don't have to watch Sesame Street now. And you will make it through third grade. Glad I could help you. But as usual... These economy instruments have the, the fretboard here is low on the neck, so it would be nice if this were popped up a little bit and we could get a better break angle there. Okay, when we uh, talk about raising the neck a little bit, what that means is we'll cut the neck loose right there by steaming it off. I uh, did an episode, I'll give you a link up there to the jig and how to do all that, but um, when you want to raise this this part up, let me get this situated here. When you want to raise this part up and you get the neck steamed off, you take a block of wood like this and you basically cut and match the joint that goes in there and you slip this on and actually raise the action of the guitar up that much 
And if you taper it, like this thing is tapered, you see there, it will actually pitch the neck forward like this. Remember, I'm still getting used to the angle. So you want to pitch this down a little bit, which brings the action up. But that's how I do this. So um, you'll see that in the episode where we um, put the neck back on. I also want you to notice here that I've made some notches, okay, here, see that? And that allows you to put one of those neck mount uh, pickups that sits right down in this area right here, and it helps to get that action up a little bit. But I'll show you how we did this. The Bonneville junk pile is actually set up this way. It's got a great pickup on it, and that allows you to put a pickup on with short of uh, one little hole that you can fill up later in here to run the wire down. You can mount a pickup without um, messing with the tone bars that we're going to have to glue back in anyway. So moving along, as we look at this guitar, let me try to get it centered up there. There we go. Um, there are cracks here all the way down. Somebody has put a cleat in all the, there already. There's one right here. There's a piece of scotch tape where the bridge was. And then going back all the way down into here from the F hole all the way down to the back of the body. And another one over here and several over here. So this top is really, really cracked up the sides. They don't seem to be cracked at all, which is a good thing. But let's flip this over. Believe it or not, the neck is not actually cut loose from um, the body. There's a little bit of a, a split there. Um, the binding that doesn't exist, that's just paint, stops right below um, where the neck attaches to the, to the head block here. So... Um, let me scoot this in a little bit. I'm still getting used to this camera angle here. There we go. Let me see if I can raise this or do what it needs to do without messing everything up. This camera wants to slip once I do that. Okay, let's make sure it's not drifting. Now, I want you to notice here that this whole thing is cracked. The whole body is coming up. Um, there's quite an arch on this thing, but I'm going to have to take the whole back off. And I'm going to basically heat up some pallet knives. We've done this before and go all the way around and pull this off. Then I'll have access to the inside. I'll be able to cleat the top and put the tone bars back on and do any work that I need to do there. Um, but again, I am going to steam the neck off of this thing right here before I start cutting loose. Now you can tell, and I pointed this out before, that when you start getting cracks here and here around the tail block, when things are drying out, everything is starting to twist like a rag and then that's how you get them body bulges and all that kind of th thing. And I have to remember, um, I think I've given you a link to the um, Bonneville junk pile. It's either right there or up on the other side. I'll get used to all this. Anyway, so first things first, pop the neck off, pull the back off. Now, I, I do want to tell you that when you pull the back or top off of a guitar, we're going to want to put a couple pieces of paint or tape somewhere here and line these things up So and do the same thing here so that when we put the body back on, it's going to it's going to be all right there. And then once we start gluing things back together, Fred, um, our friend in Malibu, has reminded me to try to build up with uh, nitrous cellulose um, shellac instead of gluing things together and then trimming everything down. So we'll try to do that. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a look at this thing. Again, the sides are pretty good. There's no cracks or anything, but you can hear that big tone bar loose in there. You might have just seen it. So, uh, that's where we'll start, and 
let's not delay this any longer. It's going to be a short episode. You're going to actually get some sleep tonight instead of watching my video uh, all night. So let's close this out. Okay, there we go. That was the before. We're getting closer to the after all the time, but next thing, I am going to pull the neck off of this thing. I want to do that before we start messing around with the body. You want to remember that if you have the neck weight on a guitar while the back of it is off, it's not going to be a good thing. So I will do the next episode about steaming the neck off. Once that's done, then we'll go to work on um, fixing up the cracks and all that and restoring the tone bars that uh, are off of this thing that follow this down. And, um, and then we'll detail it out and you will see a functional guitar that you will covet. Hey, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And... Save your money. Just save your money. You're going to want this.